Hi from Brazil, I'm Darren Norris. I'm going to be talking to you today about some of the analysis that we've been developing that we hope can help the conservation of the South American turtles. So for some time, um, efforts have been made to try to systemize uh, measures of species conservation success or under, to understand the impact of conservation actions. And since 2012, the IUCN has been working to establish some standardized criteria. And today, this has now become consolidated into what's been called the Green Status Assessment. Um, this article was published in 2018, and now it's really coming to the time where the green status is increasing and widely recognized as something that could be really useful. So here, we're going to adopt an approach that generates population projections within the green status framework. And with this, we're going to be able to identify spatially explicit priorities and also set some achievable targets. This slide at the bottom here is just showing the link to the species specialist group at the IUCN and um, where you can find more details regarding green list and all details of some of the metrics that I'm presenting. So, um, many species of turtles are increasingly threatened. Um, in South America, there are seven species of the Podignemidae. These are tropical species and all are threatened. Um, they can be wide ranging, that's continental scale ranges of 8 million square kilometers or rather localized. There's the species highlighted here on the screen is limited to a single river catchment in Colombia. And there's different degrees of threat. We're going to be looking at six focal species and the major threat is over exploitation. Um, and there's been what they call fishing down the food chain, starting with the biggest. And after this gets harder, uh, ha over harvesting smaller sized species and so on. But then together with this, there's other threats from deforestation, damming, mining, urbanization. Um, so the six species we're looking at here have size class distribution across a broad range. Um, so we've got the very large expanser to a rather small, unpronounceably named species. And the size is really important because it what, to a large extent, determines um, preference from by human exploitation. Uh, the graph here is showing size distribution from 165 tropical and temperate species. Um, all six have similar natural history. Um, females nest out of the water and it is at this time nesting out of the water that the females are really heavily targeted. Um, over 50 years, a variety of conservation actions have been developed. So looking at the slide here, over on the left showing examples. This is environmental education, it's protecting nesting areas, it's in situ um, protection of nests, ex situ head starting, whole mix. And this mix is across South America, different countries have their own variations, have their own priorities. But the, the particular message that comes across is doing this in isolation doesn't work. Um, basically, there's uh, a problem in the coordination between different groups and uh, inter integration of the different actions that are necessary. And this is where turtles are also fantastic flagship species. So all this effort isn't just for turtles. It's also for all the different species that share the same habitats that they depend on. Um, so what did we do? We conducted a green status assessment for these six species. Um, and this looks to quantify three metrics. This is conservation dependence, um, expected gains, and then look at recovery potential 
over the long term. And here we adopted a precautionary and probable approach where well, we like to think it was. So precautionary in that we didn't include deforestation. We haven't included mining, climate change, and probable in that we were able to generate confidence intervals, look at the sensitivities throughout the whole modeling process. And the process is details depend on the species. Um, but basically what we do is we look to get identify spatial units and these are river catchments where the species is present. So to do this, we went to the literature. This is a effort in um, collating data that has been published. So we're picking data from uh, articles, uh, reports. This is Spanish, Portuguese, English and also the national action plans and then with this we then go to look at the distribution of the species um, in terms of suitable habitat for these turtles and this depends largely on rivers so the rivers are the focus of our modeling process and then with the distribution we're putting together population dynamics, particularly focusing on stages that are linked to human overexploitation. So this includes adult stages and the early stages, which is up to a year old. Um, so developing in these models, again, all these parameters were obtained from published literature, have been decades of really hard work across South America. And uh, we're now coming to a point where it's possible to actually integrate this and start to generate some new insights. And we did this through some spatially explicit simulations, um, which is looking at um, if we use protected areas in relation to the accessibility of these rivers to people. We're not looking at individual impacts of different um, people. We're assuming that if you're close to people, there's going to be an impact. So we're using these simulations to model probable impacts on populations of the different species. And then to the results, what did we find? We're looking here at likely changes in the global populations without any direct and effective conservation. Um, and as you see here, at least three of them, we're looking at severe and rapid losses within 50 years. Um, so this is largely to do with over harvesting. And it's really likely that the damage is going to be done before any climate change impacts actually kick in. And the table shows the global values, but we're also then able to look at um, the different spatial units. The map on the left there is showing the change in one of the more widespread species, Unifilis, across its range. And then the next metric we looked at were the gains. So if we, if we can make conservation effective, what can we achieve? What can we do for these species? And what we found here was that with protected areas, which is shown in orange, community-based management like green here and integrating the two, which is the dark green. Um, when we're integrating community-based management, we're actually approaching threefold population increase within 50 years for two of the species. Um, so there's some potential for some relatively rapid recoveries. And over the long term, which is 100 years, um, we also see that there is different degrees of recovery potential. These are the green arrows on the right. These are sizes proportional to the recovery potential. Um, so red list and green status are complementary. We're able to, with the green status, add novel insights, what we consider to be novel insights. Um, and what we're showing is that if conservation actions focus on recovery, we should obviously also 
be able to improve the species conservation status. And so this has been a, I'm just giving a general overview here, obviously not going into the details, but there's some challenges with the red list approach. These include desensitization, generating this culture of despair, um, but at the same time, recovery is not going to be easy. Uh, the path to recovery I'm poorly understood. And from a research point of view, really lacking information on density dependence, which is one of the key aspects likely to um, drive future population growth or not. And so this is, if anyone is working with density dependence with these species, please enter in contact because this is the one aspect that we are really struggling with, have no data on this for this group whatsoever. So this green status approach, looking to open novel opportunities for positive reinforcement. This is have different conversations with politicians, enable to present the work that's been carried out in a way that could actually generate um, positive responses, positive interest. With integrated solutions, we're predicting there could be threefold continental scale increase within 50 years for some of these species. Um, but for this to work, we've obviously got to prioritize the conservation of the cultural diversity along Amazonian rivers. Um, if we are able to support the work of the local communities. Community-based community management can expand and accelerate species recovery. And so just to finish off here, green status approach provides new opportunities, um, perhaps a refresh for us all. Um, combining a green status assessment with a bit of conservation option, optimism, maybe we can be committed to 100% turtle recovery. Now, probably this won't be feasible for all species, but it's a really useful benchmark to actively promote species conservation for turtles. So, thank you very much for your attention.